What's up, Buck Dini in the garage. Today I'm going to give you a super quick tip that I use all the time on how to take probably literally the cheapest hatchet you can get, either at the Ho Depot or on Amazon or wherever, and make it to perform like a hatchet costing you tens, if not hundreds of dollars. All right. What I did here, I need a new hatchet, taking the family camping this weekend. Went over to the Ho Depot, got me a Vaughn. I'm a real big fan of this brand. I actually bought their 16 ounce uh, ball peen as a shop hammer recently. Haven't used it a lot, but I like it so far. They are made in the United States. Where is it? Hebron, Illinois. Uh, the ball peen was $12 on Amazon. Came right to my door 18 hours later. So the hatchet was $19. Here's the problem though. All right, now you guys can see the, there's really not much of an edge. Uh, and what is it? It cuts in quick. It's like a 45 degree angle. And I get it, man. It's, it's not an expensive tool, you know? Um, it's decent metal though. We can do something with this. Just a little, little demonstration. All right, we're gonna be out there trying to split wood with this thing. It literally, I mean, it literally bounced right off it. So here's what we're gonna do. Go ahead and get yourself some sort of abrasive machine. I'm gonna be using this one by 30 that I got at Harbor Freight. By no means you need a one by 30. Uh, my four by 36 would actually be better for this, but I don't have any coarse um, belts for it right now. I got like 220s. You could use a bell sander. Uh, you could use a, uh, I mean, you could probably do it by hand. The whole point here is we, we gotta bring this edge back, all right, so that we can get a sharper a sharper edge on there. That's really the key to this. Make sure you got some uh, safety squints, you know, for fashion. We're gonna jam them bad boys on, and we're just gonna eyeball this thing. This is not a precision uh, kitchen cutting knife. We're just gonna try to bring that whole thing back. That's what it looks like now. We're gonna bring it back a bit. Now, as you're doing this, you want to go little by little. You can see I'm just taking little bits off at a time. You want to make sure this doesn't get hot because obviously this has some level of hardening in it. Um, and you want to make sure they actually meet in the middle. I've done this before where I brought it back, but then there's a big like ledge there. So I'm going to work on this. You can do this with literally any type of sanding machine, or you could just do it by hand with a... Um, with a file. We are going to hit it with a file next. Let me, let me get this edge in there and uniform. Remember, little by little, don't let it get hot. Now you can go ahead and look down the hatchet <clears throat> to make sure you're remaining even. And the amount of bevel you put in it, as opposed to straight, is going to be how robust this edge is. If you got a lot of bevel in it, uh, it's going to hold its edge, though that edge is never going to be quite as sharp as it would be if it was more straight and to the point. You get it. Uh, we're almost there. Even if I just stopped here, this is already light years better because it's more of a wedge, you know? They sent me a 45 degree friggin' hatchet head there. I gotta take more off this side and we're not even. Alrighty, that is as far as we're gonna go. If you wanted to, you could walk down belts. This is an 80, you probably go down to a 120. Uh, but I like to do the last little bit by hand. Let's go back over to the bench. Alright, we've got this bad mamma gem looking pretty good. I've got her in the vise. You wanna put her in some place where she's not gonna move too much, like I did clearly. So many Christmas amateur hour. Alright, that'll do it. Uh, get yourself a relatively fine file. Uh, this is a Nicholson, they make good files for this type of stuff. Uh, this is actually one that I would use out in the woods if I was cutting wood and I wanted to carry one to, to fine tune it. So that's a good one. That's a good way to look at it. You don't want a big old thing that's going to take chunks off. And uh, I want to take those 80 grit marks out and I want to wean that edge down just a little bit more. Uh, just real light. And since the... Um, the sander was going this way and now I'm going this way, I can really see where I'm removing those marks. Uh, once again, I just want to stress you can do this with anything. Uh, you could do this file to do this whole thing. You just had to bring that face back some, which we accomplished. And we're going to put a little more of an edge on there. Every time I use a file in one of these videos, someone tells me I'm doing it wrong. Listen, man. Listen, buddy. You got too much time on your hands. As you can see, we brought that face back real nicely. We've evened everything out with the file, taking all the big valleys and grooves out of her. I'm just gonna finish her with a whetstone. This is the Lansky stone. If you're into axes and hatchets on YouTube, you're probably very familiar with this. It's a very trendy stone, but it also works really well. And for the sake of the video, I'm doing all the possible options and things you can do. You literally could have probably stopped 
after the sander and it would have been better. You certainly could have stopped after the file and it would have been better. I'm gonna go a few minutes on the course and then on the fine side because why not? If things worth doing, it's worth overdoing. But uh, understand this process could be a heck of a lot simpler if you wanted it to be, all right? Not too bad. It's not too bad. Well, all right, we got a little test block here, which I may have already taken a corner off because I couldn't wait. Spoiler alert, it works. As you can see, we now dig right in. This is a terrible uh, piece to choose because we got a big old knot there, but you can see before it sort of just bounced off the wood, you know, now it sinks right in. The hatchet I wanted was the Husqvarna. Well, the hatchet I was thinking about, what I'd really love is like a Grand Force Brooks or some crazy expensive hatchet just because if you can spend large amounts of money on a tool, why wouldn't you do it? Uh, but the Husqvarna would have been nice. I think it's either 45 or 60 bucks. Uh, probably better metallurgy, certainly a better handle. This is a very weird handle, especially with the shrink wrap, which will be uh, getting deleted. Um, that's not the worst handle ergonomically, whatever. Point being, uh, I didn't really feel like spending $45 or $60 on a hatchet. I spent $19 and 15 minutes on one, and I have a perfectly serviceable hatchet. I will bring my stone with me. If we end up going through more than two acres of firewood, uh, maybe I'll have to give it a little a little uh, touch up on the fade there, but I anticipate this will be a great little splitting hatchet and all around camping hatchet for a good long time. So that's really all there is to it. If you think I'm a hack, by all means leave me a comment down in the squawk boxes. I love hearing that from strangers on the internet. <clears throat> if you have a legitimate question, by all means, leave a comment down there. If you have any questions, there's literally 400 different ways you could do this. Like I said, belt sanders. Uh, the only way that I would probably think is, I'll bet you you could chalk up a, uh, an orbital sander uh, potentially in here. I don't think a vibrating sander would get the job done. But hey man, a dedicated monkey with a toolbox, an Uncle Jerry amateur hour. <clears throat> who's really dedicated to it, we'll get it done. So uh, let me know down there in the squawk boxes. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.